Hello everyone! On this video, you're going to see through my eyes the experience that I had this year, 2022, during that eighth day of Sukkot. I went up to the Temple Mount, I presented myself to the Lord, and it was great. In this video, you're going to see a group of about 30 mixed Christians and Jews, two religious groups that do not get along with each other doctrinally. However, on this day, we were getting along on the world's most holy site. In this next clip, you're going to see a police officer who took our group and a group of Jews aside. We were standing in line waiting for the Temple Mount to open for about an hour picked us out, about 10 to 15 of us Christians, and then another 10 to 15 or so of the Jews, and put us in one group together with the goal of surrounding us completely with Israeli police officers and escorting us through the Temple Mount for over an hour and a half. It's not allowed to go for something religious like uh, uh, Bibles, like crosses, uh, fingers, all I don't have. Yes? Very important to stay with us in this place. All this. So we are just getting past the security, and before we even start going up, a police officer comes up to us, separates us, and says that he'll escort us to make sure that we are kept safe on the Temple Mount. We will be going up very shortly. On the morning of June 7th, 1967, a battle took place. General Arik Akma and his paratroopers stormed the Temple Mount and found it mostly empty, hoisted the Israeli flag. The defense minister from another mountain, looking through binoculars, seeing the Israeli flag being hoisted atop the Dome of the Rock, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, quickly radioed over to them, telling them to take that flag down, are you trying to set the Middle East on fire? The general ordered one of his men to take the flag down, knowing that he could not bear to take it down himself in that moment of victory. The defense minister, impromptu, called some men together and came up with a truce. The Muslims would continue to have control over the Temple Mount's religious activities, continuing to halt anyone who is mu not Muslim from praying on the Temple Mount, while the Israeli troops, the IDF, would be in control of the securities of the Temple Mount. And to this day, that is the way that it is. If you go on the Temple Mount, it is the Israeli soldiers who are doing the security for the Muslim people up on the Temple Mount. I personally have gone up to the Temple Mount wearing seat seat and was treated roughly and taken off of the Temple Mount. You can see that in a previous video for wearing those tassels, the religious garb on the Temple Mount. And it was Israeli soldiers that did that, protecting me, knowing full well that the Muslims, very violent, may have beat me up or even killed me because I was walking by myself wearing tassels. <clears throat> Here in this next clip you see us going up the famous bridge the Christian, uh, towards the Christian entrance of the Temple Mount. So this is the walk up. I hear there's, I don't know, 12 or 15 different entrances. And I've been told that there's two, en two entrances that Christians can enter. Um, I've only seen this one. I don't know of this other one. But this is, uh, this is the big wooden bridge. And it's just above the uh, Kotel, which is what they call the Western Wall, which is right over here. On the way up. Here's a little Hebrew lesson for you. Every Hebrew letter 
has a categorical meaning. For example, the Aleph in pictorial Hebrew, the Hebrew that most likely Moshe was writing when he was writing in the book, is the picture of an ox. It's also the first letter. The ox represents a lot of strength. That might not make very much sense to us today now. However, back then, pretty much uh, three, four hundred years ago and all of the time previously, if you thought of an ox, you would think of strength. An ox plows through the hard earth. You put a yoke on that ox, you put a plow on the back of it, and that ox will plow through that earth no matter how hard it is. That represents the strength of the father. That ox is getting from point A to point B, just like the father is bringing us from the garden. And we're not going back to the garden, we're going from the garden to the kingdom. There's no stopping him. His strength is sufficient. And if we hold on to him with everything we have, we will get through the journey. This video is a very good example of the letter Tet. The Tet is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and it is, in pictorial Hebrew, the sign of the cross. How is the sign of the cross such a good example uh, how is this particular, sorry, how is this particular event such a good example of the Tav, of the cross? Two paths are meeting here. I woke up this morning, on that morning, and I prayed to my Father, saying, Father, I want to present myself before you on the Temple Mount. I, my heart was not in the right place. I was ignorant to many things the last time that I came here and I was not able to present myself before you. This time, however, I prepared with prayer. I told the Lord, I know, Father, that I am not allowed to pray on that Temple Mount, and my body will not be showing any, um, any movements of prayer, because I'm not allowed. However, I wish to come to the Temple Mount and to present myself before you on your holy day, you have been working on me, Father, and I want to show you your handiwork. I want you to be pleased with it, and I want you to look into my heart and see where you can continue to work on me, Father. I love you. That was the gist of my prayer. Now, these police officers woke up that morning, and they had their agenda given to them from their orders up the chain. We're in a time in history where things are changing. Things are changing drastically on that Temple Mount. My experience is not different than several other people's experience. These officers were leading a horse to water. They know what's in the heart of the Jews. They know what's in the heart of the Christians. We weren't told what to do. It was understood that that is what we would do if we were given the proper protection and the time to recognize what was going on. And we did. You won't see any clips of that in this video, but I assure you that that is what went on. They woke up that morning and they went to work with the plan of getting Christians and Jews, a large group together, surrounding them, protecting them, and leading them through the Temple Mount. This isn't something they came up with on their own. This is something that is happening in the world today. There's going to be a monumental change coming up soon on that Temple Mount. There have been meetings that have occurred with all the major world religious leaders. The Catholics are trying to do this Chrislam thing. I don't agree with any of that. Religions are separate from one another. Doctrines are separate from one another. We don't have to all have the same doctrines in order to get along with each other. I do believe we should be getting along with each other, if at all possible. We don't need to mold everything into one large religion in order to get along with each other. That leads to disingenuine people. I had my mission. I had my plan. Go to the Temple Mount, present myself before the Lord. The IDF soldiers had their mission and their plan. 
And for this moment in time, this moment in history, these paths crossed. There was alignment. And a beautiful thing happened. In this next clip, you're going to see us surrounded by police officers. If you look very carefully, you will see quick flashes of orange circles. Inside of those orange circles are police officers. When I was there, I counted 12 to 15 police officers surrounding us, very, very attentive to what was going on, constantly scanning our surroundings, being very aware that there could be a uh, possible firefight or um, or some kind of violence that might occur. And they were very attentive for more than an hour and a half, ensuring that we were kept safe as we were on the Lord's Temple Mount. So not only have the police escorted us, but there's, we're completely surrounded by police. They're keeping us safe here. And being very, very organized about it. And uh, they're really, they're really skilled about what they're doing here. Praise God. But here's a good, here's a good look of the temple. And this is probably all you're going to get because I'm probably going to put this phone away here soon and focus on my coming up and presenting myself. To Yahweh on his high holy day. And here we basically reached the end of the video. Certainly not the end of my experience. As I said in that clip, I pretty much put the camera away and focused on my relationship with the Lord at this point. There were two points here where they stopped. While I was there, I did not see any Muslims, I did not see any Christian tourists within the vicinity of our protection. We were there for about half an hour to 45 minutes, and then we moved to another location, a corner of the Temple Mount that was a bit of an olive grove filled with olive trees. Same exact protection. This next clip is a very, very short clip of us there, some are standing around, some are keeping their focus. This is after being there for about 45 minutes or so, and we were at this location for about another half hour before they escorted us further. That's the end of the video. Lastly, they escorted us to the very steps of the al Aska Mosque. We were there for about five to ten minutes. During this time, there were a group of Muslim school children who uh, were dressed in private school garb, collared shirts, looking nice with their green collared shirts. A whole group of them, probably a dozen of them or so, going to probably some kind of Muslim school and they were screaming and yelling obscenities at us. I wonder where they learned that from. Now, these obscenities that they screamed at us caused the um, Israeli soldiers to begin escorting people off of the Temple Mount. Not a single person from our group was escorted off the Temple Mount. But I believe, because I was paying attention to other things, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I believe what happened is there were other tourists and Christians or Jews on the Temple Mount who most likely engaged with the children. And the children weren't thrown off the Mount for starting it. Instead, it was the, uh, the guests of the Temple Mount who were escorted off. Like I said, the people from our group were not engaging. The people from our group were not thrown off the Temple Mount. Instead, we stood at those steps for a while, me wondering, why are we here? But here we are, we have our protection, and I feel safe nonetheless. Shortly after that, 
we were escorted to an exit. And we were not told to leave. While we were at this exit, we were surrounded by the protection of the police, and they patiently stood there and waited until we left on our own accord. During this time, uh, the Christians and the Jews had started conversing with one another. Me personally, there was a Jewish teacher, a 23-year-old Jewish teacher, who I will remain unnamed if you're watching this. I highly doubt you're watching this. But if you are, it was a wonderful conversation that I had with you. It was a group of Jews who wear the blue thread in their tassels, which is not normal for Jews, and they probably catch a lot of flack for that because the Jews have strict rules against uh, wearing that blue thread, whereas in the Bible they have strict rules in wearing the blue thread. So they wear the blue thread. And uh, it was a wonderful conversation, and we were able to commingle and converse with each other and have a wonderful time before walking off the Temple Mount. And here's my question. I'm certain that there are going to be at least a few Muslims who watch this video because they have an emotional attachment to the Temple Mount. The Jews, the Christians, and the atheists. We argue. We bicker. We fight. We name call. We kick each other in the shin sometimes even. But we're not killing one another. Why is it that you people feel so strongly about your religion and think that you are so much better than everybody else that you must be killing and murdering people for your religious world domination? It's distasteful. It's dishonorable. It's inhumane. Your violence will come upon your own heads one day. You need to learn to get along with people who don't believe the same way that you do. That will be a blessing to you from on high. Whether you believe in Allah, or the Lord, or the collective unconscious, or no God at all. I pray that the Lord blesses you with the maturity to get along with other religions, and to not support your violent leaders, to not go around telling people that most of us are not violent, while at the same time within your mosques and within your ranks, very much supporting those whose violence are moving forward your agenda of world conquest. Learn to keep the peace without violence. For everybody else who's watching, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly was incredibly blessed. And to finish off, I pray the Lord's protection over me and over my viewers. I thank Him for this experience. I prayed that morning to present myself before the Lord and for Him to see into my heart and to change me. And that is exactly what happened. Hallelujah and Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. My average video is about 5 to 10 minutes long, and it is Bible clips. I take a scripture or a couple of scriptures or a scriptural concept, and I present the ideas before you all, hoping that you will um, use this as a portion of studying yourself approved. It says that my people perish for lack of love? No. My people perish for lack of kindness? No. My people perish for lack of violence? Nope. It says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. It says that in Hosea. And I labor here continually to ensure that you are not lacking knowledge. Subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Show your support. And take a few minutes, once or twice a week, to hear concepts that are on the fringes of religious society. You will be blessed if you have given your life to the highest.